Hey, what, what is this? What is it? We're here at Thunder Ranch, and I have no idea what I'm holding here, but there's no one better to explain it than Clint Smith himself. So Clint is super passionate about old guns, especially old American guns. Me, on the other hand, you guys know that I think old guns are kind of boring. But Clint, <laughs> when he heard that I've never shot an M1 Garand, he's like, all right, mother we're gonna do a tour de force of the American gun and we're gonna shoot a bunch of Clint's historical stuff against my will, but Clint Smith is a man you don't say no to. So we're about to hop on the range with Clint come along for the journey. Okay, so uh, this is Clint and James and we're at Thunder Ranch doing fun stuff like we always do. Uh, one of the things that I wanted to do was give him sort of a step back through history. So we're kind of going all the way back to the Civil War and then we're going forward. We're talking about military rifles and equipment now. He doesn't know old guns. He goes, all this shit from here down, I don't want, okay? <laughs> and actually, he cut out some really good choices and some accurate stuff. So the first rifle we're gonna start with is also the first military rifle to have a brass case. And yes, arguable, other people messed with it, but this is a Burnside. They, in theory, would call it number five. And like, it's a model, not like the serial number. Um, they made a lot of them. And as you can tell that it's basically for that era and time, for cavalry, it's a horse, has a slide bar, has a hook. By the way, this is the first tactical sling, okay? And somebody just didn't invent that 20 years ago. The big strap, okay, goes over and around you and hooks on the ring, and then it will go cross body on his body, i.e. I got dismounted off the horse, or I did on purpose, then the rifle stays with me. Ammunition would be on him. To get it to do what you want it to do, you pull the hammer back, you pinch the lever, and it falls down. Then, okay, this is a new age, and it also makes it so it works really good. It's a polymer shell. It drops in here, so it looks like an ice cream cone. <laughs> okay, when we got the ice cream cone in, we shut it. Now, that isn't the funny part. I'm doing all this shit on a horse in the middle of a fight. And then when I get ready to do all of this, I also have to reach in the pouch and get a cap. To make it do what we want, pull the hammer back first. Now pull the block down, push the lever. Push, okay? oh my And use God. your left hand, hold the uh, rifle with your right hand, because remember we're on a horse oh, and right, we're fighting right, right. without being a dick. Then I'm gonna reach in, take the brass, okay? Which is ironic, I'm using a plastic case on the first rifle that used the brass one, okay? And then what you do is you start it in slowly, okay? And then just close it right up, okay? I'm afraid I'm gonna break it. No, you're not gonna break it. Now just close <laughs> it tight, okay? Squeeze it in there, awesome, you got it. Then you reach in your pouch, galloping horse, ba -dun, da -dun, da -da, and you put on what's called a musket cap, okay? So you got it, now you're ready to shoot. Okay? I, I have never shot a gun from this era at all. Period. You're missing out. And I would do what I always do with a rifle I'm fighting with. Uh -huh. I personally, if I didn't know, especially like in your case, I picked it up, I didn't know, I would always aim low. Uh -huh. Even a low bullet will bounce off the ground and hit the uh -huh. bad guy or throw a rock at him. Okay. So you line the sights up appropriate. You know about those, uh -huh. okay? It's not gonna be recoil, it's not gonna do anything. And it won't be a one ounce trigger like you're used to. It's just real long and heavy. It's the way they all were. There was no like accidentally setting one of these bitches off. Was I even close? <laughs> yeah, okay, and then pinch and pull, case comes out, throw it on the ground. Clint, what, what caliber is this? Uh, 54. 54, so 54. So it's a 350 four. grain bullet, and it's about 1,200 feet per second. Oh, so that, I mean, oh, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that'll yeah. thump you. Well, there's a lot of people got killed. Okay, good. So for you, you'd figure it out probably is pretty close, okay? It would just be a case of getting it squared away in your eye. The reason that these are intriguing is because I don't have to ride the horse with a powder horn and a stick. I took it, now I got the ammunition, I got the caps, which I still need for ignition, okay? And so, believe it or not, this is a quantum leap. Oh, I can from, believe it. You imagine percussion yeah. before. Yeah. And then as you mentioned yesterday, before that flintlock. So this is again a correct rifle time period, also a cavalry rifle. Okay. So because it has the strap and the hook. And so like it will hang and we'll get B roll of that later. Okay, as far as looking uh -huh. at that format. Now, this is awesome because now we have an encapsulated case to include the primer. Right. And the gun that this would have been built off of, not this gun, could have been an infantry rifle that you loaded from the bore. So then when they did the conversion, we're talking mm. like 
1870 as the general time frame. And then we would have, for example, seen this rifle, specifically this type of rifle at the Little Bighorn in 1876, mm -hmm. okay? So, so what is this gun called? This is a 4570 trapdoor rifle, uh -huh. okay? Springfield. So on this one's easy, I'll let you look at it. Pull the hammer back, okay? And then we don't have to mess with the cap now because we have a complete right. case. Now you grab this gate, right uh -huh. hand lift up, and if it was empty, which it will be in a minute, okay, when we fire it, it would eject. Uh -huh. And then you stick another one in. Uh -huh. But if I look down the barrel, it's crystal clean and sharp. Uh -huh. Now, there, I'm not gonna have you do it, but right now, take my word for it, uh -huh. it's as shiny as a new baby's butt. Uh -huh. We fire the first round, okay? It's gonna do what we call fouling down. So all this shit is gonna help. And generally, like, if I would go bison hunting, when I went outside in the morning, I suck a round in a clean rifle, my sharps, which you'll shoot, uh -huh. pull the trigger and file it down. Cause uh -huh. the gun zeroed on the file, the file down, not a clean bore. Uh -huh. Cause they can shoot differently. Right, okay? sure. So this is truly a 4570 government load, 70 grains of powder. So in this ammo, the box would say on the outside, 45, okay. Then it would say 70, then there'd be a dash or hyphen and it would go 520. So uh -huh. that's what the box would say. Okay, the caliber, okay, the powder load, 70, and the bullet, 520, okay? Uh -huh. Push down on it, good, and you're ready to go. Jesus. Aim at the same guy, this one's gonna like- Let uh, me do the 50 up. or the 100? Yeah, try it, okay? okay we'll do the 50 first. Yep. Okay. And then hold down in the grass, just let right, it go Ready? Through. Yep, engine in the bush mode. Like that. Holy shit, so this okay. one, a little bit more thump than that last one. Right. Now you know where you held and you got a hit on target, okay? So the deal with it is go ahead and push it down. Yep, just gotta be firm with them. Yep. And now go to 100 and I would aim about where you think the belly button is or uh -huh. slightly lower. Okay. okay. Same thing on the sight. Easy on the trigger because they're long and heavy. Yeah. Damn, so the idea that, that Yeah, so the idea is there's a 50 and 100 yard hit from someone who never shot one yeah. before. Yeah, never. Not okay. even close. So, I got one more. Can yeah, I give it another absolutely. shot? Absolutely. Yeah. You got it. Just think about your trigger now because the freaking hammer weighs a pound. So three for three on that one. It's a fighting rifle. It's serious. Like, you know, you and I, modern, contemporary people, uh -huh. you know, we're quelling the stunning recoil of the 223. Or we shoot a 308 suppressed, which is basically nothing. Okay. And this barrel's already Start getting hot. Three yeah, rounds. Right. Yeah, yeah. So imagine what's going on with it. Okay. So, so what type of power are we talking this gun versus the last uh, one? Probably in the 1,400 feet per second. And again, that's variable. I can make the load power and the uh, feet per second by loading the powder differently. These are very prolific in the West in the transition period when the indigenous people like got whacked. Uh -huh. Okay. And also that buffalo era. Okay. So guys would have used this gun to kill buffalo with too. Uh, yeah. Sights are better on this. Absolutely. Recoil a little bit heavier. Trigger is better on this. Right. Yeah. Um, I. This was almost enjoyable to shoot. Now we get into finesse. You go. Oh shit. <laughs> this is a Shiloh Sharps. This one is a reproduction, and I've owned a real one. Okay. And they're just awesome guns. So this is called a veneer sight. So think of it as nothing more than a um, a measuring device. Once I zero the gun like we do, then I would set it up. And then these are the increments that you're looking at. Mm -hmm. And then this is called a Hadley disc. The idea here is your eyes, you have a stigmatism in one eye. For example, you can open it up so you get more light. Uh -huh. So just bring it up, don't worry about operation. Do I, do I need I'll a fucking degree to shoot and this I, thing? No, not at all. Okay, back trigger, pull, pull it back. It'll click, feel it? Yeah. Now, trust me, you breathe on this bitch. Hence the terminology, <laughs> hair trigger. Oh my God. Right, but think about it. The better our trigger is, the more precise we can yeah, be in yeah, shooting. Yeah, yeah. So we want that better trigger. Yeah. This is called a falling block or a drop block. Pull back. Now pull back on down on the lever. Just pull down on it. Where, this one, it. this yep, one? That's the lever. Oh. So the block slid down. Okay. Loading the gun, good. So hammer back. Okay, block down, round in. Now, everyone's gonna poop, I don't care. Because I know the gun fouls fast and I'm shitting myself and I need for it to work, uh -huh. I do this. When it comes out of the belt, spit <laughs> on the bitch, okay, so much for lead poisoning. Okay, push on it, okay, and shut the gate. Good, all right, now, let's try the set trigger. So what you can see of the guy up there at 50, hold him right in there, put him, fill it with black. And then you already know the trigger is very, 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 very light. 
Oh shit! <laughs> okay, and then like that often, literally like it bumped me back a little yeah, bit. And like all of them, okay. So here, always hammer back first, okay, down on the lever, and it boots right out. Right. Yeah. So. Oh, you guys have fun today. Okay. Yeehaw! So you get an idea now, right? <laughs> so like then the cool thing is, brother, I've killed antelope, elk, and bison with this gun. Okay, so like. It's a real dead gun, it's not a safe queen. I shoot it when I shoot it, because I'm a sissy, I put my thumb here so that this doesn't cut me okay. or gouge me. So got it. you're chambered, all you gotta do is shut the gate. Okay, right. if it's snug, just like exactly right. So the problem isn't necessarily that this gun is super heavy, it is extremely front heavy. Now you can shut it. Uh, a little snug. Yep. Yep. Yeah, pop it in so there. So they're starting to file down, you can feel yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, it's like now it's getting, that yeah. last one had to give yeah. a little bit of force yeah. too, but now. Here, watch your fingers. Okay. 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 When they get ready to skin, you put your arm through it or not, your call. This is not a blade, so you don't get freaked out. This is the sharpening stone. Uh-huh. Okay. And so like in here. Oh, okay. now it's in there. Right. Okay. Okay, now I'll show you what we didn't do uh -huh. that we should do. The reason we're stuck right now is because, okay, it's falling down. This is called a blow tube. I'll show you exactly how to use it. Okay. Uh -huh. So you put the crack in this side. You put that in the, <laughs> you put that in the hole. Uh -huh. And I'll show you. So go ahead. Uh -huh. okay. You'll see the difference right away when we get ready to shoot again. Okay, I'm gonna try a hundred again. You want. Yep, yep. All right, here we go. Remember what I told you about holding low if you're yep. not sure. Without being bossy. Yep. There we go. Drop the bleach and this, okay? This is called a blow tube. Now, our problem was fouling. So I want you to take the biggest breath you can and blow three times in there. If you put spit in it, it's even better. Yep, that's good. And then one more. So what we're doing now is we gotta shoot 20 or 30 animals, okay, uh -huh. and decimate the buffalo population. Now watch this bitch go in. Oh. Push. See it? Yeah, See now it? now yeah. it's now it's in there. Because we wet down the fouling, so now it's ready to go to work. Time frame, 1873. This is a made in 73, but they call it a 74, 1874 Sharps rifle. Easy. Yeah, no problem. See yeah. It? Hammer back, lever down. So that's the decimation of the buffalo hood. Yeah, okay. okay. Yeah, so not bad, not no. bad. For me, the, the first one was the worst one. The, the one that looks like it was made in prison. Yeah. That one, oh, they hated it. We didn't hit shit with it. You yeah, know, I, yeah. I couldn't hit anything. I, I think I missed it 50 yards with sure. it. And I think to be honest with you, let, let's be honest, you never shot one before. Mm -hmm. You kind of even didn't know what it was. Yeah, no, I, if, I had no if, clue what it was. If I gave you 50 rounds, uh -huh. I'd have you on for the last half. Uh -huh. So it's just like we do a zero on a regular gun. This right? one is trap the door. What, trap door. I, I actually kind of like that one. And we That's, didn't miss with this one. No, that that awesome one, gun. I like that one. And that personal gun is really awesome as far as our- This one, like, I get you it. know, this the sights are a little funky. It's, it's front heavy as shit. Like, that, I, not yep. a huge fan of that one. Think of it this way. This I'm doing okay with. Now I'm trying to build custom cabinets with a chainsaw. Right, it's sure. It's not the right tool. And this is uh, like like Wild West era, huh? Or this no? is going to be in that, like I said, 1873 up till today. Uh huh. You have one. The real component that you're looking at here, technology-wise, is the lever. Mm -hmm. Now, if you think back, I know you're interested in history. So the Henry rifle, okay, basically on that gun, all right, you did the format where you you pulled down and locked it, uh -huh. okay, I'm sorry, up and locked it, and then you fed rounds in a tube like we might do a 22 rimfire. Uh -huh. And that was the gun that the Confederates called the gun you load on Sunday and shoot all week. Uh -huh. Okay, so that was the first one. It was followed by the 66, which is the first loading gate type rifle. Mm -hmm. Okay, same thing. It was very common to carry a 4440 revolver and have a 4440 lever gun. Those could be an 1873 Winchester's, the one mm -hmm. that most people think of. So to load it, you just push it in the gate, just like you know on your big Alaskan gun, mm -hmm. okay? So they went from the front end, okay, having to put them in. Now we went to the side loading gate. Again, another mechanical transition. Sure. Okay, and this one is in 45 Colt because the same thing, it matches my revolvers. 50 is too easy. Okay. Go to 100. All right. Okay. There we go. Good. Okay. 
then the idea was the ability to load the gun to Quickly, the side yeah, gate yeah. rapidly, then actually fire the gun. I wouldn't say necessarily rapidly, but it gave us now a continuity of fire over mm. anything from bending on the cartridge, three to seven rounds. So mm. that's a lot of ammo in a fight. Okay. I like this one. I, yeah. I mean, this is lighter Absolutely. and uh, like it, it's a little easier to shoot. Um, uh, the sight's kind of weird. Yeah, the ball has to go down in the notch. So, so power-wise, where does is, this one's got to be the weakest out of the right, ones so we've shot? Right, so it's a shot. pistol caliber. Yeah, yeah. So they talk about we invented a pistol caliber carbine. No, you didn't. That's did. the original. Right. So now we spanned okay from like the Civil War, the 1860s. Now we're all the way, like I said, in it really till today. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. But in the era, it would have been like the lever guns. We started our journey in the Civil War, and we end this episode with the Wild West. Stay tuned for episode two, where we go from what Clint Smith refers to as the pinnacle of firearms technology back in the day, the biggest jump in progress after the West was won. I won't ruin the surprise for you, but I think we open the next video with a rifle that's very near and dear to Clint's heart. And we'll end that video, episode two, with what I consider to be the true pinnacle. We'll also cover everything in between. Stay tuned and don't forget to subscribe to this, my personal channel. Sit tight for episode two, which we will air a week from today.